What a weekend of Call of Duty, guys. My word, Modern Warfare, the competitive season for Modern Warfare is officially in the books as COD Champs came to a close this weekend and the Dallas Empire, the Dallas Empire were crowned champions of the Call of Duty League. It was an insane weekend overall from last weekend with all the drama, all of the close finishes, the round 11s, game five, so much going on and going in to last weekend to lead us into this one. And it lived up to the hype. It was epic. So obviously going into this weekend, we had the winners finals, Empire versus FaZe. We had the loser semis, Huntsman versus London Royal Ravens. There was a lot of pressure in these series to make it happen and as well because of the news that dropped today about 4v4 which i just posted a video about that go check that out after this video but there was a lot of pressure on these players in champs overall throughout the whole tournament in playing well setting themselves up for a good roster mania to ensure that they secure their spot on a roster there was a lot going into it for all these players and in the top four there was so much money on the line you could tell how much it meant to all of these guys i think we all knew that the empire phase match was going to be close Everyone was a little bit more skeptical of the Huntsman London match. I think we all thought that Chicago had a pretty good chance to pretty handily win this match. I thought the Huntsmen were a really, really good bet in this first round to make something happen. And they were. You know, my official prediction was 3 1, and they ended up winning it 3 1. They lost the first hard point, which was actually pretty surprising. They ended up playing on Ramaza, and I just don't understand why the Huntsmen were willing to play Ramaza map one. I know they've recently been playing it more often. They felt significantly more confident at the map. It really like the last two events of the year. But London, it's been their most consistent map recently as well. And I thought if you're the Huntsman, you have a better map pool than London does overall. I'm surprised they didn't take advantage of that. But they went and faced off against London map one. They lost it. London looked really good. And I'm sure Huntsman fans were a little bit nervous off the rip after that first map. The SD on Ramaza, again, after losing the Ramaza map one, you had to be worried. As a Huntsman fan, like, oh no, man, we're playing Ramaza again, SND. It can be inconsistent. Weird things can happen. You know, who knows? But after some big time plays from the Huntsman overall, they ended up taking care of business 6 4. Ramaza can be such a cluster, and it seems like a lot of teams have really figured out how to, like, and it seems like a lot of teams have really figured out how to, like, attack on offense, play through bottom green, and make those pushes towards B bomb, and how to, and how to, like, aggressively, quickly push towards A with smokes and those rushes bottom dirt. Ramaza is really about patience, playing together, calling out the right rotations, making good decisions, and some teams are definitely way better at it than others. The s &E felt huge for the Huntsman though, because going onto a Gunrunner Dom, you had to be worried for London. Huntsman have been just the significantly better Dom team all year long, even though London's shown a little bit of life at champs at Dom, it's been their worst game mode on the year. And I think going into that, they were still one in three at champs in Dom, so, not an ideal situation for London going into a map three on Gunrunner. So of course, no surprise, Huntsman took it. And we're looking to close out the match on a Petro Hardpoint. And again, you had to go into that expecting that they would have the advantage based off how well they played Petro Hardpoint against FaZe in the previous weekend. And Huntsman looked really, really, really good in this series overall and on Petro Hardpoint. And they closed it out 3-1. It was a really, really good sign for the Huntsman going into a loser's finals match against either Dallas or FaZe with how well Pristini played in the series. He played really, really well. And they looked solid in SCD on Ramaza. And overall, they came out a little bit slow in map one, but they rebounded 1-3-1. I think Huntsman fans were really confident and feeling pretty good about things going in to a loser's final against the loser of FaZe v Dallas. So this FaZe v Dallas match was going to be really, really interesting either way. And going into the match, I was really, really surprised to see Cave Hardpoint on the rotation. I thought for sure Empire was going to be trying to veto it, but they embraced it. Immediately, we saw why. Whatever was going wrong for them earlier on in the year on Cave, they had fixed and they came out and looked awesome. I mean, awesome. They had new strats with how they basically strung like Hill's three and five together and how they played for p5 to get full 60s on it both times phase was rotating early for p4 while empire pushed straight through the map took those p5 spawns they sent shotsy to the back of the map with the gra in hand and this was a consistent theme that we saw with empire on cave they kept doing it it kept working against phase and they took the cave hardpoint which really swung the momentum in the series so going into a gun runner s and d it felt like phase needed to win it and that's exactly what they did. They came out and played an awesome SD. It was one of my favorite SD maps, probably of the whole year, because there was just fantastic plays 
from Empire and from FaZe on offense and defense. They were clutches on both sides. It was a back and forth map. It felt like a map that went round 11, even though it went 6-4. It was intense the whole way through. I highly recommend going back to watch that if you missed it because it was just so epic. So going into a Petro hardpoint, FaZe played the second half perfectly. It's exactly what they needed to do to kind of claw their way back into the game after struggling in the bad side on the first half. And they came back, won it 161 to 153. And I think they played really, really, really well. So following up two awesome maps, the SD and the Dom, we go into a hardpoint, which was one of the most like unconventional weird wild hard points of the whole season again empire won it 250 to 239 and it was back and forth with how teams were holding dallas was holding the p5 and how that came out to play and for dallas to win that map when they were heavily outslayed they were losing gunfights all over the place for most of the map and they ended up winning it absolutely massive for the momentum how they played that i think it was pretty demoralizing overall for phase even though they outslayed them by quite a bit they lose the map clay was basically the only player on empire playing like well in a slaying category throughout the map consistently. They were still able to pull it off because of their nice rotations, how they strung together those hills and were able to flip phase multiple times off of breaks and then just hold it. It was awesome. And just really, really, really fun quality to watch. Again, just some wild maps in a winner's final like this at COD Champs. Really unique maps between two really, really, really good teams. It was some legendary Call of Duty. So heading into a game five on Ramaza, man, there are so many rounds here that FaZe wished they could get back, man. Ramaza SND, which again, can provide for some pretty weird opportunities with timings and how people sit and the rotations and how you can catch teams. And that's what happened to FaZe. They caught some, you know, bad breaks and they made some bad plays where they weren't playing together in like 2v5 situations. They got clutched up on multiple times. It was literally nuts. And Dallas was pulling magic trick out of magic trick. Ace out of ace out of their sleeve over and over. Dallas clutched it up, man. At the end of the day, 6-3 took the series or took the map and took the series in a game five. Insanely demoralizing. It felt like FaZe just wanted them to win at points because of how many rounds FaZe was giving away. FaZe looked beyond defeated after that loss. And I was actually pretty nervous for FaZe then going to this Huntsman match because I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to bounce back after a tough loss to Dallas like that. And again, sending Dallas into the grand final, gonna be up one map, whoever comes out of this phase husband match, they were sitting pretty, feeling really, really good with now a day to prepare for that match as well. They were in a good, good spot going into the grand final. So now we're in the losers final, the winner goes on to play Empire in the grand finals. And this one felt a lot like the inverse of what the Huntsman played in the loser semis against London. The Huntsman came out on fire in map one on Gunrunner. They won 250 to 166. It wasn't even close, really. The Huntsman played a really, really, really good map of Gunrunner Hardpoint. Immediately, they had a lot of confidence going into the rest of the series. But FaZe put out the fire in the S&D with some clutch plays this SD on Arklov Peak was another one for the ages Huntsman on Arklov Peak have some crazy matches in champs man it is an unbelievable the the catalog of wild call of duty the Huntsman have had on Arklov Peaks during this tournament but overall it goes round 11 there were so many plays in all of those rounds to get to that point that could have gone either way with some weird pushes and how they've clutched up and both sides were playing awesome SD heads to round 11 and phase clutch up i'm going to show it to you check it out oh, and again once the guns stop that's when the real fight begins priest with a bomb going down he's going to make this whoa there it is from easy the first kill comes through Asti's now still with that snipe in hand nay's still going over the top the trophies are doing their job saving these players from those projectiles and Asti's though he's been going pretty hard in the pixels thus far in this tournament Sniper in this dying moment would be exceptional, but again, Sim in the trench finds another kill. Four versus three. Priest are backing him up. Over the top comes on boy, finds the first kill. Shots are gonna be there. Major Maniac backs on up once again. That broken four position as Priester takes care of Scum. It's a 2v3. It's now a two versus one. Christini. You've got to do the magic here. 10 seconds remaining. Finds the first kill. Pristini makes his way forward. He's going to run out of time on the clock and it's going to be done. Celium. He hides just long enough and the big brain plays for either side come to a close. Atlanta phase. Talk about a tough loss for the Huntsman. Again, the Huntsman have clutched it up over and over and over and over. 
and they, they fall just short there in the losers finals in map two sends it to a dom on gunrunner where phase has been really really good on the year i mean huntsman have been pretty good too but phase is definitely a favorite on this type of map and they come out and prove it. They play a really, really good Dom as well and put Huntsman away in map three, sending it to a Petro hard point, which was a tightly contested map. Again, these hard points in, in these series were just crazy. Could have gone either way multiple times because of how spawns play out on Petro. All you got to do is try to play for that flip, get the squad spawns, and then you're golden. FaZe played it just a little bit better, was winning their gunfights and punched their ticket to the grand finals. Overall, it was a pretty inconsistent effort from the Huntsman in these matches, especially in this match against FaZe. I mean, Abizi really stepped up for FaZe here at the end of the year, and he played great in that final hard point on Petro. It was kind of the difference maker, and Celium was going off, and Celium went off on P5. It was insane. The hard point time, going over to the restaurant. Well, we'll be handing out the kids' menus or not. Atlanta FaZe are about to put this show on for us and pull this hard point back. Here we go. Cell leads the charge. First kill goes his way. Arstis is up next. There's a nade for you. And there we have it. The hard point flips open. FaZe now on the defense. FaZe, of course, this game is very much, well, at this moment on this hill, more about not losing it than potentially winning. They can still do it here. They do have a lot of time on the clock, but you see Huntsman, a lot of pressure in through these little side hallways. They can test Sardine in the back, but FaZe winning the gunfight. Cell able to pick up three along the way. Finds three. That's insane. Watch that hard point clock in the middle. 35 seconds remaining. They're going to try to get as much of this out as they possibly can. Formal now on Scum, making the way forward. Shots are there. Brilliant work again from Cell. Kill number four. As the shots are there on the inside of the map now, it's going to be the front line pushed forward. We could see a lead change as Celium gets number five and six. Unbelievable stuff from Cell to stay alive and now take the lead for Atlanta Phase seven in a row. Celium cannot die. He will not be stopped. Kill number seven before he goes down. Chance rotation underway. Phase. So that was the difference in the map. There's a few clutch plays at the end, split the hairs between these two teams and sent the Huntsman home finishing third at champs, which is no chumps finishing at the end of the day, the top three teams that we all thought were the best from the beginning, from the beginning before even the first land. And then even after the first few lands, we all thought it was Dallas, FaZe and Huntsman. And that's exactly what it was at the end. And then at the end of the day, the top two teams, basically the whole year for most people in their power rankings, Dallas and FaZe were in the grand finals so this is what i don't love i would love to hear what phase has to say about their vetoes here in the grand finals but they were willing to play the exact same series over again they replayed them map for map from the previous series they just played the day before and they went for round two on cave hardpoint and guess what happened the exact same thing. Empire pushed through P4, secure spawns for P5, and that's exactly what happened again. They got massive amounts of time on P5 both ways around, and they handily put FaZe away in map one. Then you're heading into a rematch on a gun runner where FaZe won it last time around. And you know how it is. In S D rematching a team on the same map, it's a significantly bigger advantage than even rematching a team in hardpoint. And so FaZe comes out they may, they may not have as many strategies in the bag and empire felt like they were just reading them at every turn they had answers for phase on gunrunner this time around overall empire just played significantly more patient s and d and pushed the bombs together more effectively as a squad and that really was the difference in the s and d overall you could basically dive into any of these maps individually and break this thing down but at the end of the day empire was playing more strategic s and d throughout the series i forgot to mention again empire started up the series 1-0 so after that s and d win which is just crucial for empire you're up 3-0 in the series all you've got to do is win two more maps and you are crown champion of the call of duty league you're at a massive advantage at this point heading into a domination on petro and this is really what broke phases back they had a huge advantage after the first half where they started on bad side and they took the lead and now they were starting on the good side in the second half they were in great shape to win it then everything fell apart for them at the end of the game empire clutched it man it was massive. It felt more like a choke by FaZe and a clutch by Empire. It was a must win match for FaZe. At this point now you're down 4-0 and you have to reverse sweep them in a best of nine grand final. You have to win five straight maps. That is a, that's a tough task to do. And this felt like their death sentence, especially with a Hackney Dom coming up on map six. 
even if you win this hard point then you win the s and d then you gotta go play a hackney dom that is a tough stretch and basically impossible so again you go on to the hard point phase does rebound they take the map 250 to 211 on gunrunner which isn't like the most surprising thing of all time they've been really really good on gunrunner on the year then you head to s and d on ramaza a rematch of where they did blew it the day before empire was more confident had better strats played more patiently played together traded their kills significantly better than phase the whole way through and they were crowned champions in round 10 they won 6-4 here's the final seconds everywhere you look you just see entire go. players time ticking second by second phase's dream of a championship is disappearing every window every door there's somebody it's a ludicrous gunfight win for sim but will it be enough just 12 seconds to go seemingly nothing that he can do and there's the final kill dallas empire get it done they are your 2020 call of duty league champions crim six now undisputedly the greatest call of duty player of all time Clayster goes back to back to get his third ship as well. And for the youngsters in Illy, Hook, and Shotzi, their lives are forever, forever changed. I mean, you've got to give them props, man. Dallas Empire, this whole season, fought through a lot of tribulations after Shotzi's horrible start. People were doubting him, like, maybe you drop him. Like, there were people out there who thought Shotzi was literal garbage. I mean, after that first event, it was tough. It was a really tough opening weekend for him and Illy. But they obviously came back stronger than ever and were insane at this point in the year. Crim6, you got to give Crim6 props, man. He was fantastic in SD and Dom, especially on the weekend. He played great almost all the way through, especially in SD. Him and Clay were so clutch so many times. And that's why Crim was given the COD Champs MVP. He was nasty and. It's crazy to see Krim and Clay out there still frying as long as they've been frying. And they're now both three-time champions. They joined Karma as Mr. Three Times themselves. You know, who would have thought before BO4 that Clayster, two years from now, would be a three-time champion? It seems impossible, but it was absolutely well-deserved. Empire was the best team at COD Champs. And I really thought FaZe would come in and show off why they are who they are why they're the young phenoms but at the end of the day they blew it against empire when it mattered the most in an s and d they lost the fundamentals and that's exactly what crim and clay were there to do they were icy they made the big time plays and that's why they're there so shout out to dallas empire it was a wild way to end the season and we're gonna be talking a lot more about cod champs as a whole this whole season the format and 4v4 and so much more in tomorrow's podcast so be on the lookout for that because it's going to be absolutely insane and we got a lot more to talk about with roster mania the off season and kind of a recap of this season and a lot more in-depth thoughts on a lot of these certain moments and matches and, and and certain times inside these matches so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did like comment subscribe i do appreciate it and share the video if you guys really enjoy it i really really do appreciate it but as always guys i'm your boy Savage Lee, and we will see you next time i'm out